the book of first corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 love is patient love is kind love is not jealous love is not pompous it is not inflated it is not rude it does not seek its own interests it is not quick tempered it does not brood over injury it does not rejoice over wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth it bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails praise god and then verse 12 at present we see indistinctly as in a mirror but then face to face at present i know partially then i shall know fully as i am fully known so faith hope love remain these three but the greatest of this is love praise god let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus with thanksgiving lord we honor you we praise you we bless you we enthrone you above every situation and every circumstance of our life we offer ourselves we offer this day we welcome your presence lord in our hearts we pray that you may teach us something new from your word that is going to help us to grow more in the knowledge of you to grow more in wisdom and that your word will transform us from inside out for our own good and for the greater glory of your name we honor you we praise you and we worship you it is in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen so we are reading a scripture about love the famous first corinthians chapter 13 and in connection to this um, scripture we have john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life praise god so we have been given the fullness of what um, this love of God means and then we have the book of First John and that is chapter 4 verse 8 whoever is without love does not know God for God is love in this way the love of God was revealed to us God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him in this is love not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an expiation for our sins beloved if God so loved us we also must love one another no one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. Praise God. So all these are guiding scriptures um, which are revealing to us of the fullness of the love of God, which is Jesus. And... Um, the truth that the Bible reveals to us today which we are going to meditate on so that our minds will be focused more on God our eyes fixed on Jesus through every experience of our life this day and for the greater glory of the name of Jesus so we are going to start with this uh, scripture that we just read from the book of 1 Corinthians and we are going to do something here um, from verse 4 now we know that God is love so we are going to read it again and say 
instead of love we put jesus because if john 3 16 says that for god so loved us he gave us his only son who is jesus so if god loved us then he gave us jesus and then jesus came to reveal to us the love of god the father uh, it means that jesus becomes the answer becomes the love uh, god is love but no one has seen god but Jesus came to us to reveal the face of the Father, to reveal who the Father is. So we saw Jesus and we saw God. God is love. We saw Jesus and we saw love. We didn't just see it, but we experienced it. Why and how? When Jesus um, took the road to Calvary and he died on the cross. So we are going, uh, we are going to read this scripture again and put Jesus instead of love. So Jesus is patience. Jesus is kind. Jesus is not jealous. He is not pompous. He is not inflated. He is not rude. He does not seek his own interest. He is not quick tempered. He does not brood over injury. He does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. He is the truth. He bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. So faith, hope, and love remain by this three, but the greatest of them is Jesus. Hallelujah. Why are we doing this? We are just uh, trying to keep our focus on Jesus and having this word internalized in us that the fullness of who God is, the fullness is what Jesus came to reveal to us. And he revealed to us the love of God in one way. And which is that one way? <laughs> the way of the cross. So it means um, the cross is equals to the fullness of the love of God revealed to us. And it also means that there is only way for all of us because when we look at uh, Jesus at Calvary where he revealed to the world to you and I to the whole world the climax of the love of God for us we don't just see Jesus on the cross we see Jesus and we see two thieves we see Jesus the Holy One of God and we see two thieves seen us representing us human beings representing us who are sinners however from the two thieves we know that one of them was broken enough to acknowledge that Jesus is holy and he is God and he acknowledged and repented of his sin and he got an opportunity to experience first hand mercy of God and the promise of John 3.16 was unveiled, revealed, and established in his life when Jesus said, Tonight, today, you will experience um, my divinity. So, the other thief, you know, was negative, saying to him, Save yourself, and then save us. You know, so if he did not have the faith that Jesus is who he says he is, and that is what John 3.16 tells us, so how he would he have managed to experience this fullness of the love of God? He wouldn't. So it means we have to have faith. Now, uh, Jesus came to reveal to us the fullness of the love of God. God is love. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. So it means that it's only through him that we can experience the fullness of love, of life, the fullness of life. And no wonder David said in Psalm 63 that your love is better than life. Because the fullness of the love of God is equals to the fullness of life. No love of God, no fullness of life. So Jesus came to reveal to us the way to Calvary and we see him on the cross on Calvary and we see two thieves. So it means whether 
holy or a sinner, this is the only way. This is the only way. Whether holy, Jesus is holy, took the cross. Sinners took the cross, crucified on Calvary with Jesus. So whether holy or sinners, there is only one way. One way is the cross. So there is only one way for all of us, which is the way of the cross. And the way of the cross is the way of love. The way of love because it is the way that reveals the fullness of the love of Abba Father through Jesus. Hence, Jesus becomes a part of the equation mm -hmm, in our lives and the answer to all our problems. He becomes the answer to all our problems. And no, I'm not surprised to um, think about and imagine the fact that before Jesus came, there were prophecies after prophecies after prophecies that a prophet would be born. And to a point that the prophecy now landed on Mary. And of course, we see the unfolding of the prophecy and Jesus is growing up and then he starts to minister and definitely everything changes. It's over 2,000 years ago. We are still talking about Jesus. We are still uh, watching him do wonders in our lives. We are still experiencing his love. We are still seeing his, the word of God become alive today. And this happens in faith because he might not be here in person, but the word is still alive. So what are we saying? That he is the answer to every question, every problem. And that is why to fulfill what we just read in 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> it is only possible when love, when Jesus, when Jesus is part of our journey, when we have a relationship with Jesus. It is only possible. You see, if we read uh, 1 John chapter 4, and we just read that God is love. And then the Bible says in verse 10, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an expiation for our sins. Because, beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us. His love is brought to perfection in us. So the question is, how do we get to this point? when um, the Bible tells us that God is love, so we have to love. It is a command. It is a command that Jesus came and summarized. Um, uh, he summarized the commandments, the ten uh, commandments given to Moses into two, love God and love one another. But you know, it is the hardest thing to do. Why? Because only God is love. <laughs> only God is love so if the fullness of the love of fullness of the love that we need to love each other is God so it means we are not able we cannot be able to love fully love each other in the fullness that God has revealed to us that he expects from us if we do not have a relationship with Jesus. If we do not have a relationship with Jesus, we are going to give something else. And we will call it love, but it will not be love. God is love. So it is when the love of God has transformed us, has transformed our inner man, when we have that relationship with Jesus, who is the fullness of the love of God, when we have faith in God, which allows us to be able to experience the fullness of this love of God, it is when we have seen Jesus, when we have seen him, when we see him, it is when we um, get 
to encounter him through the word. It is when we seek him, when we worship him. It is when we have seen him and we believe who he is, like the good thief at the, at the Calvary Hill. And the promise definitely will come back to us that we get to experience the fullness of what John 3, 16 says, for God so loves, so he gave, so that whoever believes, you see, we cannot receive without believing, but we cannot believe if we do not see, if we do not see him, if we do not seek him. So Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness to seek God, to seek God. It is a command it is not a request because if it was a request then we can choose to or not to but it is a command because this is um, the word of God and if this word of God is in the Bible we have to draw near to him if God is the fullness of what we need to live to live in because we also know there is uh, Colossians 1 19 that says the fullness of everything was pleased to dwell in Jesus it means we cannot be complete we cannot be complete live in the fullness we cannot live complete without Jesus if greater greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world that's um First John 4.4, 4, you belong to God, children. You have conquered the world. And he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This victory is to have Jesus in us. He empowers us from within us. And that's why Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So let's come back to this. So the cross is equals to fullness of God's love. God is love. The Bible says we love each other. Love is patient, love is kind, love never fails, and we are meant to be transformed by this love. And we have been commanded to love, but the question is how can we love without having been transformed and received the fullness of this love of God in Jesus into our hearts and into our lives and into every area of our lives. It is only when we are transformed by this love this fullness of the love of God, that then we will begin to give it. Mm -hmm. So we don't love because we have this love to give, but it is that desire to seek the Lord, that desire to seek the Lord, that desire to know Him, that expression of desiring to know Him is already an expression that we are seeking to know him, to love him. When you seek to draw near to him, the Bible says he will draw near to us. Then we get to experience in faith, we get to experience the fullness of his love. It is believing like the thief at the cross. The good thief is even referred to as a good thief. I don't know if there's anything like that, that that exists, but it is from what happened to him you know what he saw he saw jesus as he is the son of god the lord of lords the mighty god the most high god the savior the redeemer as the one who came to die for us that he did not deserve to be at the cross of calvary he did not deserve to die on that cross like a slave like that but he chose he chose to do it so that we can experience the fullness of the love of Abba Father and when we experience it we can say like what the Bible says at present we see indistinctly as in a mirror but then face to face one day at present we know partially then we shall know fully we shall know fully say so faith hope and love remain we have faith in God. We hope in God. We hope in Jesus. We hold on to hope in Jesus. We don't give up hope. 
And then he says that the greatest of all this is love. <laughs> because love has a name. Jesus is love. <laughs> so we pray that as we do this meditation this day, that the Lord will begin to open the deepest recesses of our hearts to be able to understand this concept deeper and so that he may transform not just our perception, our understanding, but our hearts to focus on him, to seek him, to have faith in him, to believe that he is who he says he is, And when we do, then we get to receive the fullness of this love that he died to give us. This love is what he expressed to us by dying on the cross of Calvary. That through this experience and this meditation and reflection, that we may get to have the Lord help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to die to self to die to self to have everything in us that does not represent what he deposited in our system to die completely so that the risen lord can manifest the fullness of his love in our hearts in our lives, in our families, and in every area of our life. It is possible. The cross is a climax of the fullness of the love of God. When we look at Jesus on the cross, when we meditate on Jesus on the cross, then we get to know the fullness of the hearts of our Father, the fullness of love. God is love. We cannot give what we do not have. We have to be honest to ourselves. We have to be conscious of this fact and to pray that the Lord will fill us with his love because the fullness of his love will not even struggle anymore. It will just flow out, out of us to other people. Then we will be able then to relate to others and to handle others with this fullness of the love of God. It is not uh, humanly possible, but it is divinely possible. It is not something we can humanly do because it's of God. But if Jesus came to give us, then it is possible that we can receive it and we can live in this grace. It is the fullness of the grace of God the love of God, the fullness of God's love is equals to the cross. It is the way of love. It is not just the way of suffering as we perceive it sometimes, but it is the way of love. The way of love. You know, um, it is the fullness of the love of God. But sometimes we can get distracted to focus only on one area. We can look at Jesus' suffering and imagine, oh, that is just too much. He's not meant to go through that. He would have done it in any other way. But you see, um, we cannot be distracted to focus on just one one uh, side because there's a reason why the suffering, that brokenness, that brokenness is supposed to reflect to us that if he was broken, that he was broken for us. So whatever form of brokenness that we could ever go through in this life, it is already covered. And it is a heart that is broken. The degree of our brokenness reveals the the room upon which we have within us and the capacity to receive the love of God. So it means that the Samaritan woman received the highest degree of the love of God and she was able to to um, to even express it when her life was transformed 
and this happened through a conversation of worship she encountered jesus because her brokenness her brokenness was just too deep think about mary magdalene you see when we focus on the things that break us then we are bound to be blinded by the fact that he was already jesus was already broken for us and he is the fullness he is the fullness of the love of god the father then it means that this fullness of this love from abba father will be able to occupy fully a uh, our inner self our our brokenness will occup- you know when we get healed and and redeemed when he comes into the equation when he becomes the answer when we un- encounter him the thing is all this brokenness all this pain all whatever it is he can depending on the degree he can push it out and fill that void with his love and the nature upon which we experience this fullness of his divinity it is also in a measure the equation is complete depending on the degree of our brokenness and the realization that we can do nothing without him to believe who he is who he said he is he is to believe and to come to that point where nothing else matters or nothing else works just him he has to do something then something will work it is to come to that point where we come to the realization that without Jesus we cannot live even that one second he becomes the breath that we desperately need to be able to live that one more minute of our lives it is when we come to that moment where we acknowledge that the divinity of god is not that far he actually came to earth for us so it is not about our insufficiency our nothingness but it is about his mercy his grace his power so he came so we can experience him receive him be transformed by him then we open our hearts and allow him to come into our hearts and to take over every area everything everything in us that has not does not and will never be able to replace what he died to give us it is to believe that he has the answer to every problem in our lives that he becomes that answer that he has the capacity and the capability to transform everything everything nothing excluded to change our lives to transform our perception to change everything about us and to help us to focus on him fix our eyes on him believe in him even that faith he can give us the ability to trust him it is to focus on him and just pour out our hearts our brokenness our pain and everything and to allow him to take over to take over because when Jesus died on the cross he said it is finished so when we come to encounter him we acknowledge what we are what we imagine you know that humanness that human inclination to sin and to move away from god is finished then he takes over we believe that in his in his divinity he has given us an opportunity to experience salvation redemption and the fullness of who he is because of his love then we open our hearts and we receive so we pray that this day the lord will help us to be able to have our hearts open to receive his love to remove every limitation from our mind from our perception that we are not what he expects of us but to know that when his mercy reigns then it changes everything let's pray father in the mighty name of jesus with thanksgiving for this word that you have given us we offer our hearts to you lord we open our hearts to you we open our mind we open our lives 
Oh Lord, we acknowledge that you are the fullness of the love of our Father. Thank you for coming to reveal it to us. Come, Lord Jesus, into our hearts and reign in us. Rule our hearts, Lord. Help us to be able to reject sin and Satan and to have your love consume anything in us that does not represent you so that you alone may be the king of our hearts that you alone may be the king of our lives that you may rule and reign from in us as a great I am as a great I am help us to focus on the cross and to to realize that the fullness and the climax of the love of Abba Father has been revealed to us and redeemed us by the power of your precious blood by dying on the cross of Calvary help us to die to self so that we can be alive in you so that you can your risen power your risen power can manifest in us Lord Jesus we love you and we honor you we praise you and we worship you have your way Lord can do nothing without you you are nothing apart from you. It is in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.